Focus on your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. It was on the night of his awakening. The, breath, the Buddha was also watching his breath. And he was able to get an awakening. It's the same breath, not that much different. So what's missing in us? What's the qualities of alertness, mindfulness, ardency? Or as he said, resolution and ardency and heedfulness. In other words, really applying yourself to this, really watching your own mind, because that's what it was all about. Today we're commemorating Visakha Bhujha. Bhujha means paying homage. Visakha is the name of the month. It was in the full moon of this month that the Buddha was born. And then 35 years later, on the full moon in this month, he came awakening. Another 45 years after that, on the full moon in this month, that he passed away. That's th what the tradition tells us. And so why do we commemorate these events, and why are we paying homage? Because he showed us what human beings can do. He discovered that there's a path to the end of suffering, and it, it depends on our own actions, and particularly depends on training the mind to be alert, to be ardent, heedful. And so that's what we're doing right now. Because on the night of his passing away, he also said that if you wanted to pay homage to him, the best way was to practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. In other words, practice for the sake of training the mind so it gets out. Otherwise, we keep swimming around in this cycle of death and then rebirth and then re-death and rebirth again and again and again. And you wonder when we'll ever have enough. The problem is we don't remember how many lifetimes we've been through. He was able to remember that night. He saw people go up and down, he himself going up and down. And he saw in the second knowledge of that night that people go up and down in dependence on their actions. And their actions were a combination of things, the results of actions coming in from the past and also decisions made in the present moment. These were the things that shaped their lives and we determined where you're going to go. So he realized the importance of the present moment because he saw that in some cases there were people who did good things in this life, but then at the last moment they developed a wrong view and the next lifetime they were pulled down. Other people had lived unskillful lives, but at the last moment they developed a right view, focused on their actions instead of complaining about other people and other things and complaining about the fact that they were dying, focusing instead on training the mind. And they were able to go to a good place. So it showed him the importance of the present moment. What you do in the present moment has a huge impact right now and on into the future. So if you're going to practice his teachings, show homage to him. This is where you do it, right here, right now. Each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out. Ask yourself, where is your mind? Like those old commercials that say, it's 10 o'clock, do you know where your child is? This is the first breath in the meditation, do you know where your mind is? Second breath, third breath, all the way through to the end of the session. You want to know where your mind is. Because if you don't have control over your mind, then you've lost control of the most important thing in life. Everything else goes out of control as well. So we remember this lesson. We pay, we pay homage to him for, after gaining awakening, spending all that time teaching other people. Because once he gained awakening, he didn't owe anything to anybody at all. He could have spent the rest of his life just sitting around under trees, enjoying the bliss of release. But instead he went to all the trouble of teaching other people, setting up a Sangha, laying down the rules that we have in the Vinaya, so that this teaching would be kept alive for long periods of time. Here it is now, 2,600 plus years later. The teaching is still alive. But what's going to keep it alive on in the future? Well, it's, it's us, through our practice. The books may last, but if people are not practicing, it's as if they're empty words. But when you put the teachings into practice and you see that, yes, you really can release the amount of suffering here in the present moment by the way you focus on things, by the way you analyze things, by the way you understand what's going on by the way you observe what's going on, and the skills that you can develop, you realize you can really make a difference right here. When you see that, then you begin to see the value of his teachings. And not just right here while you're sitting with your eyes closed, but as you go through the day. Be very careful about what you do and you say and you think, because these things are important. These have a huge impact on determining where you're going to be, where you're going to stay, where you're going to go and the opportunities that are open to you. 
So try to develop as much skill as you can in what you do and say and think. And skill means acting in ways that are not harmful to anybody, not harmful to yourself, not harmful to the people around you. And particularly looking into your mind. What ways of thinking do you have that are harmful to you, that lead to suffering? What ways lead away from suffering? These are things he discovered on the night of his awakening. And he taught them for another 45 years afterwards. And then on the night of his passing away, he put everything down. All that he had done, he put that down. Gave it back, even the vinya that he, even the vinya that he had taught, he handed that over to the monks. He said, "Okay, it's up to you now." And then he passed away into total happiness. It shows that it is possible through our actions to find true happiness. So it's wise for us to take those teachings into consideration and give them an honest try. And as you stick with them, okay, this is where you show your gratitude to the Buddha for having discovered this path and having taught it. And you also act for your own true well-being.